Hi friends, today we are going to study about the linear regression model. So let's first understand what are the modeling algorithm. So look at here on the screen that uh, it means here we are talking about the machine learning models. So modeling uses machine learning algorithm in which the machine learns from the data like human learns from their own experience okay so machine learning models can be classified into two three categories uh, as per the <coughs> task performed and the nature of output what we want so it's mostly depend on the nature of output what you require so one is the regression second is classification third one is the clustering so we have the three machine learning model three type of machine learning model we use so in the regression the output variable or the target variable which is to be predicted should be continuous okay just like if we take one example of the crop production based on rain because the if rain is good the crop production would be good if we have a historical data of last 50 years or the 25 years of certain region then we could predict as per the rain how much would be the crop production uh, at the current moment or whatever. So this is the regression because the our output variable is also continuous which is the crop production in metric ton how many metric ton would be the crop production over there. Second is the classification model. The output uh, variable to be predicted as a categorical variable it means the target variable is a categorical variable there may be binary it may be multi-category and uh, suppose classifying the person is covid 19 positive or not so it is a classification model through the some symptoms we want to know that he is uh, either he is positive or not without doing any test so if we have the data of uh, past historic data of the patients of the covid and this all so we could make one model and as per the symptoms we could define and uh, third one is the clustering clustering there is no target variable no predefined notion of a label is allocated to the groups or clusters so just like a customer segmentation and this all sort of thing we do with the clustering now if we see the machine learning methods so we have two machine learning methods we have the two broad category there are some other categories also reinforcement learning and uh, semi supervised learning but we are generally taking the two broad categories which are the supervised learning methods and the unsupervised learning methods so supervised learning method the past data with levels is used for building the model as i explained in the crop production and then so regression and classification both sort of uh, algorithm uh, we could use here in this supervised learning method uh, these two uh, algorithm regression cluster uh, sorry these two algorithm regression classification algorithm fall under this supervised learning method category unsupervised learning methods no predefined levels are assigned to past data and we as per the pattern we make the segmentation or cluster okay so clustering alg algorithms fall under this category now we see what is linear regression okay so the regression model is a statistical procedure that allows a researcher to estimate the linear or straight line relationship you know, that relates to or more variables so this linear relationship summarizes the amount of change in one variable which is a target variable that is associated with change in another variable or the variables which are independent okay or also called the predictors understand the model can also be tested for statistical significance because we could also use this for the inferential analysis okay to test whether the observed linear relationship could have emerged by chance or not so we could use a apply there also as well as predictive analysis or uh, inference analysis both 
there are two linear regression models we have. One is the simple linear regression. Second is the multivariate linear regression. If we talk about the simple linear regression, there is only one independent variable and one dependent variable. So there are only two variables. One is dependent. Dependent is always one variable, one and only one. Independence may be one and more than one. But here in the simple linear regression, there is only one independent variable and one dependent variable. Okay, two variables. In multivariate linear regression, we have one dependent and more than one independent variables okay so that is a multivariate so how we measure it suppose uh, we have these uh, points the which are mentioned in the star these are the actual output we are getting on the y-axis on the x-axis we have i just uh, Look at here in this picture, these are y axis or these are x axis. This is our independent variable and this is our dependent variable. Okay. So if we see this height, it is y. Okay. This is y. So we could say that uh, it is uh, y1, the height of this point, height of this point is y2, it is y3, y4, y5, in this way we are getting this whole thing. And this line is our model, best fit line, this is the regression line. And this line is giving the prediction. Okay. So, this point on this line is cape y1 and this point is cape y2, this point is cape y3. So, this is the predicted y or this is our actual y. So, there is some gap or some error or some difference between uh, actual y and the predicted y because the points are not lie on the line all the points some points may lie on the line but all, not all sometimes so if they are not lying on the line then there are some error okay so this error is denoted by y minus y cube Okay, so this is our or we could denote it by epsilon or by the E. So this error is denoted by E and uh, here you see it is our E1, it is our E2, it is our E3, here we will get E4, in this way we get this all. So, we have to uh, draw a line, the best fit line is what, where the summation of y minus y cape square i is equal to 1 up to n is minimum, okay, where the summation of square of the error is minimum okay it is called the some say rs is residual sum of square okay some say that sac sum of square of error so don't uh, uh, <coughs> confuse with this terminology okay don't don't make any confusion with this terminology sac or rs both are the same thing so, we have to minimize this error, okay, so we could get the best fit line, understand? So, we use the least square method for this, uh, for doing this, so I will explain later all in detail. So, here you see, uh, 
we find residuals and RSS for any given line passing through the scatter plot. Okay. So then we find the equation of the best fit line by minimizing the RSS and also find the optimal values of beta 0 and beta 1. Beta 0 and beta 1 is what? Because we use the different terminology. You know this, you are all aware about this equation. It is the straight line equation. M is here the slope and C is the intercept on Y axis. C is this. Or M is slope. Okay. So it, if here is theta, so it is the M is 10 theta. Okay. 10 theta is perpendicular over base. So this is our uh, slope or the here if we take this in the uh, with reference to beta 0 and beta 1. So we could write that uh, the same equation in this way predicted y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 or we, if there is only one variable so we don't have to write the x1 we just write the x so beta 0 plus beta 1 x so beta 0 here is the intercept and the beta 1 is the slope so here then we find out the equation of the best fit line by minimizing the RSS and also found the optimal values of beta 0 and beta 1. Means optimum values of slope and intercept. This is the intercept and this is the slope. Okay. So we know that the best fit lines is obtained by minimizing a quantity called the residual sum of squares and RSS. Or we will now be introduced to the concept of cost function okay this is a cost function it should be what what should be minimized we, we are going to minimize it is the cost we are going to maximize the thing that is a profit function so here we are talking about the cost function okay now we come to the next slide the base fit line is found by minimizing the expression of rss which i already explained to you which is equal to the sum of squares of residual or the uh, SSE sum of square of errors for each data point in the plot. Residuals for any data point is found by subtracting the predicted value of dependent variable from actual value of dependent variable. So here you see it is the residuals how we are getting. This is the equation of the line of regression. So y is going to beta 0, beta 1, x1. So I have explained you the beta 0 is an intercept and the beta 1 is a slope. So that EI, which is the error, is equal to YI minus predicted Y. Okay, so ordinary least square method, if we see the E1 square plus E2 square and up to EN square, we have the N data points. So residual sum of squares. Okay, so if we see here, so we get the RS is equal to Y1 minus beta 0 minus beta 1 X1 beta 0 minus beta 1 X2. In this way, we are getting the different, different x1, x2, x3, these points we are putting over there in the single, uh, simple uh, linear regression model. So this way, we are getting this, the summation of y is equal to 1 up to n, the yi minus beta 0 minus beta 1 xi is whole square. So this is the uh, thing behind the uh, concept uh, <coughs> of the cost function. Now, gradient descent. What is gradient descent? Gradient is a slope and descent is a iteration, yeah. optimizing it. So gradient descent, gradually descent, gradually. So gradient descent is an optimization algorithm that, that optimizes the objective function. You know, which is the cost function for the linear regression, which is the y minus y k whole square summation of these all to reach the optimal solution. In other words, an algorithm to minimize the cost function by optimizing parameters. Okay, so we have the y is equal to mx plus c is the our linear equation. We make a cost function jmc summation of y minus mc plus uh, mx plus c and then whole square. So this is our cost function. So we'll go in detail later on about the gradient descent. Uh, it is the algorithm which works behind the formula. Okay, whenever we write in the Python or in our linear LM model or GLM model, the back end this algorithm works over there. Okay. 
and there are lots of iteration through this it get the proper value of uh, that uh, uh, minimum cost function and uh, and that way we find which one is uh, what is our minimum cost okay what would be the y minus y k in that way it, it decide the determine the value of beta 0 and beta 1 or the value of m and c okay final value so new predicted value oh, is equal to old predicted value minus step size where step size is learning rate and slope okay as gradient descent will also be used for logistic regression even in neural network also so i give the brief description of this So this is a function. You know that this is our uh, function is called a square function. So f of x is equal to x square here. So we know that the minimum value of y would be zero here. Okay, which would be zero. So how we could get it? So we will differentiate this ddx of uh, f of x with respect to x. Okay and uh, then we get 2x hmm? we put some point here like minus 1 if i put so i will get uh, if i put minus 1 then i will get minus 2 if i get uh, 0 i will get the 0 okay so the slope uh, ddx is the slope of that tangent uh, here if it is minus 1 so i will get this so it is the minus 2 okay and here if i put so it is 0 Okay. And this 0 if I put here, I will get f of x 0. So at 0 it is 0. So this is the uh, cost function in this way. We find out the gradient descent work in this way. The learning rate is what we are taking the distance here. We are how does it iterate? And sometimes we take this and then we go there and uh, then you are again not getting here to here you are shifting then you will shift again here then you will shift again here then you will shift again here then you will shift. it will take long time so we have the learning rate as is small as possible it, it should be optimum it should not be too much small it should it should not be too much large it's it it must be optimal so we could see that uh, how this it it take the iteration and the finally whenever it will get this and near to that that would be our uh, it would determine the beta 1 and the beta 0 whatever the m and c and we could make uh, we could draw a best fit line so the process which works behind that that is the gradient descent algorithm okay now so the new new predicted value is what uh, if i explain you here this is our the uh, uh, old predicted value okay whatever so whatever we got the um, here we got the minus 2 is our uh, old predicted value and uh, new predicted value we will get again through that uh, here sorry so the new predicted value old predicted value minus step size and uh, step size learning rate and slope so as the gradient descent will also be used for logistic and i have explained you even for the neural network we will go in detail when we read about the neural network i will explain this whole thing but uh, here is we don't have to go in that deep okay because the few of you may not be from mathematics side so i'm not going at this moment in the day so linear relationship if i explain you that we could write a y is equal to mx plus c y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x we could write also in the form y is equal to a plus bx so here a is the intercept and b is the slope so slope of uh, b is the y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1 over x2 this is the perpendicular this is the base so the tan theta if we consider here the theta so tan theta is equal to perpendicular over a base so in this triangle the perpendicular is this y2 minus y1 and this is the x2 minus x1 so it is the slope b you could find out in this way 
and here is the least square regression I already explained you this all thing so there is no need to explain now best fit line if you see the strength of linear regression model can be assessed using two matrix one is the R square or it is also called the coefficient of determination and residual standard error RAC or it is also called the RMAC root mean square error okay R square or the coefficient of determination we also learned an alternative way of checking the accuracy of our model which is R square statistics R square is a number of is a number which explains what portion of the given data variation is explained by the developed model okay so it always takes a value between 0 and 1 okay in general term it provides a measure of how well actual outcomes are replicated by the model based on the proportion of total variation of outcomes explained by the model i will show you mathematically how it is measured as expected outcomes overall the higher the r square the better the model fits your data so mathematically it is represented by r square is equal to 1 minus rss over tss residual sum of square and the total sum of square so what is total sum of square so i will explain you that so here you see the total sum of square uh, if we talk about this is the formula which i explained in the previous slide and uh, i will not go in deep uh, you could read this here that the residual sum of square in a statistic it is defined as the total sum of error across the whole sample okay uh, we are getting the summation of this so it is the measure of the difference between the expected and the actual output a small rs indicates a tight fit of the model of the data it also defined as follows so what i have the we should have the small rss okay it means our model is good this tight fit the uh, line is passing through oh, near the actual points okay and ts is the total sum of square it is the sum of errors of the data points from mean of the response variable mathematically tss is total sum of square so you see the formula of uh, this uh, tss is yi minus y bar so i will explain you that so you see this is our mean of y is this line is the mean line and these are the actual points so this is our uh, regression line of regression so this difference from the mean is the uh, we get the summation of this y this is our y and this is the y bar okay so y minus y bar we are taking the summation of this and that is the tss total sum of squares so i just read this statement also for you so importance of rss and tss the think about it for a second if you know nothing about linear regression and still have to draw a line to represent those points the list you can do is have a line pass through the mean of all the points as shown below okay so this is the worst possible approximation that you can do the tss gives is a gives us the deviation of all the points from the mean line okay now here also i explained this thing uh, with different graph and the different perspective here you see this is our actual point yi okay this is our regression line where it is the predicted y y cape and this is our y bar line mean line of y it would uh, <coughs> this uh, mean line always be horizontal and parallel to x axis okay the mean of y it would be same all over so this you already know that the predicted and actual difference is the error it is e. so it is the sum of square of error sum of square of errors okay this one is that here you see the difference between predicted and mean not the actual and mean actual and mean is the tss as we have seen so sst i have written here sum of square of total total sum of square is the same so yi minus y bar uh, whole square and get the summation of this so that is the total okay 
and this one predicted and mean difference is called the SSR basically the sum of square of residual this is called basically the residual this is called the era there are some the different uh, scenario the some statisticians follow that and some statisticians follow this so that is the thing so SST whatever your SST means this is equal to SSE plus SSR sum of square of error plus sum of square of residual so r square is equal to ssr over sst so ssr is a different thing kfy minus y bar it is it has been not been included over there now what i am doing uh, sst we know that it is tss in the previous slide we have seen sse i am writing rss residual sum of square or it is the ssr i am just putting okay so if i transfer this to this side then what I will get TSS minus RSS is equal to SSR so instead of SSR what I am doing I am putting TSS minus RSS or here also I, SST I am converting in TSS if I simplify this TSS over TSS minus RSS over TSS so TSS over TSS is 1 minus RSS over TSS. So don't confuse with this because in the previous slide you know that we have written the 1 minus RSS over TSS. So it is the same formula. Okay. And uh, this value if you take the SSR 0. So R square is also 0 because the SSR in the numerator. If you take the SST equal to SSR okay SSR is equal to SST then R square is equal to 1 so that is here so if R square shows the goodness of model in other words what percentage of variability can be explained in my response as a linear combination of the predictions okay now we will more talk about the R square coefficient of determination it is also if you have the correlation coefficient you make the square of that it would be the coefficient of determination okay that is the R square. Here, you see, I have given one figure. Before that, uh, I will read the statement what I have written on the slide. So, trying to reinforce this understanding of R square visually, you can look at four graphs of marketing data and compare the corresponding R square values. So, here you will see in the graph one, which is this one all the points lie on the line and the r square value is perfect one if all your actual point is lie on line it means your r square is equal to one in the graph two if you see some points deviate from the line and the error is represented by the lower r square value 0 0.70 it is not much scatter much far away from the line here you see these points are more scatter so the devi deviation further increases and the r square value further goes to 0.36 and here you see deviation is too much <coughs> deviation of point is too much so here we see the r square is 0 0.05 okay so here you could easily see that uh, how r, a r square <coughs> reinforce <clears throat> so what happens we are taking the equation square of the error summation of the square of error that is called the RSS and we have one measurement uh, the accuracy measurement the R square you know that if it is near to one it is a good model and there is another uh, parameter by which we could uh, find the accuracy but that is not a good uh, parameter but uh, you should also know about that so that is the rmac root mean square error so it is nothing it is the square root of e i square summation of over n okay so it is the rmac root mean square error okay this is the summation of square error 
and we are dividing it by n so it is the mean mean is mean of square error and then we are taking the root so it is the root mean square error so it is also one of the measurement but uh, there is no range for rmac it may be minus infinite to plus infinite so here you see uh, the aim of least square regression line is to minimize these errors of prediction let the error of prediction associated with uh, x1 be e1 so that e, e1 is equal to in this way and uh, we want this should be minim minimum okay so we know that r square is also we use for the uh, as a parameter of the accuracy of your model as uh, i have explained you earlier so as i explained that the strength of uh, linear regression model can be assessing through using two matrices one is the r square coefficient root determination and we know r square is a is a relative measure so it is a relative measure uh, why it is relative measure because it is a coefficient okay coefficients are always relative measure so there is some range always in the coefficient so we have the range from 0 to 1 so we know if it is near to 1 it is good model and near to 0 it is not a good model it is a bad model in the re residual standard error what does it mean uh, we are getting the summation of ei square we know that that is the ei is what y minus yk poly square summation of that we are taking and then we are dividing it by n and then we are taking the square roots so this is called the residual standard error or it is also known as rmac root mean square error okay but this root mean square error is an absolute measure it is an absolute measure because it is not a coefficient or the range of this rmac is minus infinite to plus infinite so it may be any value so we could not determine if there is a range like this we could determine that it is near to one it is good but there is nothing okay so what you will do here if you use the rmac as the tool of measure the strength of the linear regression so you must have to evaluate the model with trend data set and then find out the RMAC of that and then evaluate the model with test data set and also find out the RMAC with that and compare both the RMAC if there is very small difference in both RMAC then your model is good otherwise you have to retune the model so this is another measurement of uh, uh, strength of the model now the very important thing now we start with that is the assumption of simple linear regression let's take a look at the what assumption of simple linear regression work so linear relationship between x and y there should be some linear relationship between dependent variable and independent variable okay error terms are normally distributed error terms means ei should normally be it should normally distributed if you take the real term e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 and en then you make a histogram or it should be a normal shape so error terms are normally distributed not i am to not talking about the x and y i am in the second point i am talking about the error terms third point i am also talking about the error point error terms are independent of each other so all the error terms the e1 should not be dependent of e2 and the e3 and the e4 and you know, it should not be dependent on the subsequent or the preceding they are all independent error terms have constant variance it must have the constant variance it means uh, if it is normally distributed they are normally distributed as per the observations but at the if you see the each uh, error point so there should be sigma distribution y uh, it is the y, x is equal to 65 and the mean ey is uh, mean is uh, it says the e y is uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 6 5 and the standard deviation is sigma so the standard deviation should be same of all the error points okay in this way 
I need to say that. So that is the homo sedasticity. Okay. So these are the assumption of simple linear regression. Analyzing the residuals which I explained you. So this is the normally fitted. You see the normal distribution of the residual term is a very crucial assumption when it comes to of to making. Uh, it comes to making inference from a linear regression model. Hence, it is very important that you analyze these residual terms before you can move forward. So, you, so this simplest method to check the normality is the plot of histogram of the error terms and check whether the error terms are normal or not. You easily check it. Analyzing the constant variance, how we could analyze the constant variance. So, we draw the mean line which is on zero. And apart from this, we also need to check the visible pattern in the error terms in order to determine that these terms have a constant variance. So these are the error terms uh, E1, E2, E3 and this and this is the 0 is the mean for that. The pattern of error terms. So you see it is the distribution or scatterness should be uh, equal. It should not be very high. Here you see some points are the, it may be some outliers over there some outliers here also so other thing is okay so we could remove the outliers then we could work it on and then we could get the proper scatterness and then hypothesis testing of beta coefficient beta coefficient is the b1 okay and uh, once we have fitted a straight line on data you need to ask is this straight line is this a significant fit for the data okay it is significant fit or simply it is a is the beta coefficient significant to the extent that it is helping in explaining the variance in the data plotted so clearly you need to perform a hypothesis test on the beta coefficient the null alter and alternate hypothesis in the these cases are the null hypothesis beta 1 is equal to 0 and the alternate hypothesis the beta 1 is not equal to 0 Okay, so and test this hypothesis, the test statistics for beta is t is equal to k beta 1 minus 0 and I see k beta 1. So, the this test statistics follows student t distribution in minus 2 degree of freedom. The p value is then calculated on the test statistics in order to determine whether the coefficient is significant or not. So some recap I have written here because the inferential we know through the inferential analysis we know these all things which I have taken the previous sessions. So what is a t distribution? So the for a small sample size has more spread than normal distribution. Okay. So it is more spread like this. I just uh, just a moment. I just draw with the pen. So it is like this. More straight. This is the T distribution. And if you read the for a large sample size, the same as a normal distribution. So for nor sam large sample size, it would be like this. Understand? So this is the thing which I am going to explain. Effectively, it is just a normal distribution and just to account for low sample size. Okay. So this is all about the T distribution. Next we see what is over there. Assessing the model fit. So some of assessing measurement I have already explained like the R square and the RMAC. Anyone you could follow. Generally, we follow the R square. Uh, RMAC is the very weak assessment measure so after we have determined that the coefficient is significant using p values we need to we need some other matrix uh, to determine whether the overall model if it is significant to do the, to do that uh, we need to look at a parameter called the f statistics so the parameter to access the model are the t statistic used to determine the p value and hence helps in determining whether the coefficient is significant or not like the beta 1 is significant or not through the t statistic 
as we have I have explained in the last slide. F statistics is for the whole model. So used to assess whether the overall model fit is significant or not. Generally, the higher the value of F statistics, the model is more significant. A model turns out to be. Okay. R squared after it has been calculated, the model fit is significant. The R squared value tells the extent of the fit, how extent the model is fit, how well the state line describes the variance in the data. Its value ranges from 0 to 1 with the with value 1 being the best fit and the 0 is the so casting the worst. So this is the assessing of model fit. So now let us see the practical of this uh, simple linear regression. <coughs> 